Well, good morning again. Today is Sunday, June 14th, 2020. Thank you for joining us. Our lesson today is again from the book of Proverbs, and we will actually be looking at lesson two, which is entitled Value God's Wisdom, or Value Wisdom. And so uh, on the screen, you will see our outline for the day, and that's really two main topics. The first topic is earthly father's plea from Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And our second outline is a heavenly father's word from Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6 through 11. And so um, I thank you again. We started a new unit. Uh, actually, we started a new quarterly topic, the summer quarter. And the first unit is entitled, Many Faces of Wisdom. So let's pray, and then we'll get started with our lesson for discussion for today. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we come again to thank you for another day that you have made, and for this opportunity to be a part of this day. We pray now, Father, that you would bless us and keep us continually in your care, that you would help us to set aside any cares, concerns that we might have, and that we may focus our hearts and our minds on the lesson study, and that we may find practical applications for our daily lives. We thank you, Father, for your Son, Jesus. Because of him now, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, Father, we who believe in him can have life, and we can have it more abundantly. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And so uh, our lesson again uh, is entitled Value of God's Wisdom. And our scripture, uh, which is coming from Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, the NIV version or the New International Version of the Bible. And so with that, I will open the scripture and we will turn to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. And you should see it on your screen. I wanted to put it on the screen so you can see what the title of it in the Bible. In my Bible, it says the title of it is The Moral Benefits of Wisdom, or as we look at the title of the lesson, The Value, The Value of God's Wisdom. So let's read these scriptures together, beginning at chapter 2, verse 1, and reading through verse 11. It says, My son, if you would accept my word and stir up my commandments within you, turning your ear to wisdom, and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who, who walk in blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful one. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. And so let us look at our lesson context for today. And also I'm going to put that on the screen. And I want you to see I put the, uh, the unit topic, Wisdom in the Proverbs, also on the screen as a reminder for you and for me that this is our second lesson in the month of June, which is June 14th lesson. Uh, and if you have not gotten your books yet, the book, Sunday School Books for June, still available at the church in the uh, Greater Shallow Missionary Baptist Church, uh, probably in the administrative office. But I do suggest that you call ahead to make sure there's someone on hand to give you your Sunday School book uh, so that we can continue our study. But I want you to have this listing of the, each Sunday so you can study along with us in your Bible. And so we, last week was June 7th. We looked at Listen to God's Wisdom from Proverbs chapter 1, 
verses 1 through 4, 7, 8, 10, verses 20 through 22, and verses 32 and 33. Today's lesson is entitled Value Wisdom, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. Next Sunday, June 21st, will be Receive Wisdom's Gift from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 8 through 14, and verses 7 through 21. And then our final lesson for the month of June will be June 28th, Feast with Wisdom, Proverbs chapter 9, verses 1 through 6, verses 8 through 10, and verses 13 through 18. So I want you to have that in case you haven't got your books, you still can go ahead and begin to read the lesson or the scriptures. And so now I want to take some time and provide our context to help us see where we are. And I thought I'd go back and look at what godly wisdom really is. Uh, I know we've been talking about wisdom, and even in this lesson I made sure I said it's God's wisdom, it's godly wisdom. So let's look at the lesson context, and that should be on the screen also. It says that Proverbs 6, 16 says, How much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver? The Bible urges us often to seek wisdom above all things, such as what we see in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. But there are different kinds of wisdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19 says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. And verse 20 says, The Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are fruta. There is obviously a difference between godly wisdom and worldly wisdom, as James pointed out in James chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. So godly wisdom is, of course, comes from God. And it honors God. Godly wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord and results in a holy life. Worldly wisdom, on the other hand, is not concerned with honoring God, but with pleasing oneself. With worldly wisdom, we may begin become educated, street smart, and have common sense that enable us to play the world's game successfully. Godly wisdom enables us to prepare ourselves for eternity. With godly wisdom, we trade earthly values for biblical values. From 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 16. We recognize we are citizens of another kingdom, and we make choices that reflect that allegiance. From Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, and chapter 3, verse 20. Having godly wisdom means we strive to see life from God's perspective and act accordingly. The book of Proverbs is part of the Bible known as wisdom literature. Proverbs is, fully, is full of practical instructions for life. Many Proverbs contrast the wise with the foolish and warn against repeating foolish actions, such as Proverbs chapter 3, verse 35, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 24, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 7, and Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11. Everyone makes mistakes, but the wise learn from their mistakes and take steps to avoid repeating them. The foolish may make the same mistake over and over again and never learn from their, their lesson. In today's lesson, the writer Solomon continues the appeal from lesson one of last week. The father impresses as the young person the superiority or value of finding and holding on to godly wisdom. And so with that completed, we will go now and look at our outline and our discussion for today. Our first outline comes from earthly father's plea, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And I'm reading from the NIV version. And so it's a search for wisdom, verses 1 through 4, is our first outline or our first subtopic on our first outline. And I'll read the scripture for you on the screen. You should see it. It says, My son, 
If you accept my word and stow up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for a hidden treasure. So the writer here of Solomon is writing as if he's addressing his son or the young man uh, of that time. But any, any loving parent, any godly parent, want to see their child learn and how to understand and how to apply wisdom in their life to deal with the various circumstances that they have to deal with. But this is a conditional statement that Solomon writes and says because he puts the word if. It's conditional, it's a conditional offer. He says if the son or if the young person would accept the father's word in verse 1, and if he accept the word, he would store up or hide the Father's commandments uh, in his heart. As David writes in Psalms 119, verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so storing up the Father's command will ensure that the Son can, can uh, that the Son come to refer to them at any time and so find his way or their way in any situation. In other words, you are actually committing the Word of God to memory. Because there's sometimes when you may not have a Bible, but if you got it stored up in your heart and stored up in your mind, then the Holy Spirit can bring to your remembrance the things that Jesus has said. And so the pathway to true wisdom is actively listening and heeding God's instructions. Uh, or verse 2 points out, the heart here describes our ability to reason, to think, and to consider spiritual matters. Matters again in verse two. Matters again in verse two. Challenge to call out and to cry aloud in pursuit of insight and understanding. In other words, the the, the writer or the speaker here, Solomon, is challenging the listener to call out. To cry out. In other words, if you really value wisdom and you see the benefits of godly wisdom, then you have to make some efforts to want to hear it. Last week we saw what wisdom was crying in the street. It's not hard to find. It's in God's word and it's crying out to us every day. But we have got to cry out to want to receive it. And we've got to cry out aloud to want to hear it. And we've got to pursue it so that we might gain insight and we might gain understanding, as verse 3 points out. So now the son or the young person is to be consumed with a desire for wisdom as if for hidden treasure. A lot of people spend their lives chasing dreams, and they're chasing dreams to become rich or become famous or whatever that dream might be. And they neglect the wisdom that God provides. Wouldn't it be wise to have wisdom so you'll know how to deal with those situations in life that you come across? Solomon is writing from his own example. When he became the young king there of the uh, United Kingdom, his first thing that he asked for was God would give him a, a, a spirit of discernment that he may understand how to judge his people. Because God was so uh, pleased with Solomon's prayer, not only did he give him wisdom, but he gave him also riches, and he gave him a lot of things. So wouldn't it be nice to, at first, have the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom to know how to apply that knowledge and that understanding before you get your chances on it? A lot of young people start out now and they just, they just want to get there by any means. But some means just not going to help you if it's not godly means. And so then the son is to be consumed with a desire for wisdom as it is as valuable as a hidden treasure. And they use the analogy of valuable than gold, more valuable than silver. And so verse 5 is our second uh, uh, subtopic has to do with finding wisdom. How do we find wisdom? He says, now, if you do all of these things that he's mentioned to us in verses 1 through 4, it says here in verse 5, and I put it on the screen, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is what we need to look at. 
And we'll understand what that really means. The fear of the Lord means to acknowledge and to submit to the Lord as the source of true knowledge and true wisdom in verse 5. So dedicating oneself to fully searching for wisdom will then lead to the understanding that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. We ought to have a healthy respect, a healthy uh, respect for God. We ought to understand that God is the source of all knowledge and he is the source of all understanding. And we've got to trust God's word and lean on God's word and apply God's word into our daily life. So then true wisdom is not just searching for knowledge. True wisdom is not just searching for understanding. But true wisdom and knowledge are found in a relationship with the Lord. That's the end game. The true end game is to develop a, a meaningful relationship with God. And this is what verse 5 points out. God is the end of our quest. And Solomon clearly lays that out in his other wisdom book called Ecclesiastes. In chapter 12, verse 13, Solomon had set out to discover and determine the meaning of life. But at the end of the lesson in chapter 13, uh, chapter 12, verse 13, he determines that let us consider the whole matter of the thing. That the real essence of humans is to fear God, to have a healthy respect and acknowledgement that God is the source of all knowledge and wisdom and to obey his commands. So then our second outline for today takes us to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6 through 11. And here is God, the Heavenly Father's word, and the Heavenly Father's promise concerning our quest for wisdom. And I'll read this verse 6, which is the source of wisdom uh, in your hearing. So Proverbs verse 6, chapter 2, verse 6 says, For the Lord give wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. God's wisdom result in full in fulfillment by leading people to develop the qualities that's emphasized as being necessary for a good life. And that's in verse 6. And the qualities that's necessary for a good life is to understand that the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And that's why we ought to be seeking our knowledge and our understanding and the wisdom that we need to have to apply the knowledge of God and the understanding of God into our daily lives. So both knowledge and understanding has to do with learning God's character and recognizing what God desires of us uh, in, from our lives. Without knowledge from God, we are spiritually starving as well as we are, uh, we are spiritually dead. You know, Jesus says in Matthew 4 and 4, when he was being tempted by the Satan in the wilderness, he says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the word of God. So we are not living just to be physically alive, but we also want to be spiritually alive. And the way we're spiritually alive properly is through listening and following God's word, as Jesus points out in Matthew 4 and 4. And this is what verse 6 is talking about. So now, wisdom can also provide us with the protection that we need from, uh, for the wise. A protection yeah, for the wise, those that are wise. Paul writes, I mean, Solomon writes this in verses 7 and 8. And I'll put verse 7 and 8 on the screen for us to read together. Beginning with verse 7. It says, he holds success in store for the upright, and he is a shield to those who walk in blame, walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful one. So God is the one who holds success in store for those that are upright. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, God told after Moses' death, God told Joshua that my son Moses is dead. But he promised Joshua that he would be the one that would lead these people to conquest the land or to settle the land. But he told Joshua, Joshua, that when you get into the land, don't stray to the left nor to the right of my word. That if you want to have success in the land, then you must hold to my word. And Joshua learned that because in Joshua chapter 24, 
Joshua told him, said, you know, which one are you going to choose? Are you going to follow the gods of this land? Are you going to follow the gods of Egypt where we come out of? He said, but for me and my house, we're going to follow the Lord. And so that's how we become successful in life is learning to trust in God, learning to understand that all knowledge and all understanding comes from God and learning that wisdom is from God's very own mouth. And that's how to apply the knowledge and the understanding that God has allowed us to have in order to have a successful life. And a successful life is living a life that God calls for us to live. And so then, God shields those whose walk is blameless and upright. Uh, Solomon points that out in verse 7. God also guides the way of those that are just and protect the way of those that are his faithful ones. It's pointed out in verse 8. God never abandons the way of his faithful ones. Paul, uh, Psalm is right. David writes about that in Psalms 91 and verses 1 through 4. Clearly Isaiah in chapter 40 verse 31 talks about they that wait on the Lord. And so we want to wait on God. We want to learn how to wait on God. So then God given wisdom will help us in our everyday affairs. Man, I tell you, young people uh, really need to listen to what the Proverbs has to say. And not only young people, but all godly minded people, all godly people ought to listen to what the word of the Lord says. Because it's God's given wisdom that helps us in every situation that we will deal with in this life. And so in the, our last part, which is verses 9 through 11, we see preservation in wisdom. How wisdom can preserve the upright. How wisdom can pre preserve the just. How wisdom can preserve the righteousness. Here, wisdom is really talking about the word of God. Solomon is a speaker. But he's clearly speaking from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Solomon was truly a wise man. The Bible uh, accounts for that. But Solomon also wanted to pass on his wisdom to those people uh, under his rulership, as well as those young men particularly that needed to understand how to have a successful life. And a successful life is given or had only because we live according to God's word and according to God's will. And so here in uh, chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, you'll see these words on the screen. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. He uses the word then. So it's sort of like a contraction here, or it's sort of like a statement, an if statement, that if you do all of these things that he's promised, that he's talked about earlier in uh, beginning in chapter, verse 1 of chapter 2, about crying out aloud, about seeking God's wisdom, and about learning that, the, 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 that wisdom really, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Solomon points out here, then we'll have an understanding of what is right and what is just and what is fair in every good path. By following the Lord's direction and receiving his help in life, we gain experiential, experiential understanding of the qualities the Lord view as good, as right, as just, and as fair. We get to experience. We get to practice what God wants us to do and hopefully we retain some of what God's telling us to do. And so we learn from that by gaining experience of living a life that's called uh, pleasing in God's eyesight. We learn to view the things that God sees as good. And those things are doing what's right. Those things are doing what's just. And those things are doing what's fair toward one another. That's what verse 9 is pointing out. Understanding these three virtues that we just talked about, the things that are right, the things that are just, and the things that are fair, allows people to pursue every good path, which Paul, which the writer Solomon points out in verse 9. So then wisdom and knowledge becomes part of our spiritual makeup. That means that's, 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 that's the inner man. When it says here the heart and the soul, 
it refers to the inner person. So then we want to have wisdom as part of our spiritual makeup. We want to have knowledge and understanding of God as part of our spiritual makeup. So then discretion and understanding will protect us and guard those who, who live by godly wisdom in verse 11. Or we will not have the discretion to know how to handle situations that we're in. We'll have the ability to understand what God, the situation, to clearly see what God wants us to see and to know how to deal with these situations in a manner that's pleasing in God's eyesight. So now chapter 2, which is not in our lesson today, verses uh, 20 through 22, concludes with an appeal to walk in the way of the good man. Let me just read that to you. It says, it concludes with an appeal to walk in the way of good men and to keep the path of the righteous and contract between upright and, and wicked. Or where chapter 2, the last part of it, continues to appeal to the hearers of what is reasonable and what is good and what is right in God's eyesight. But it also contrasts that which is wrong, that which is evil. So in conclusion, and I'll put this on the board so we can read it together. The theme of wisdom and its necessity in our lives find its fulfillment in Christ. We are continually exhorted in Proverbs to seek wisdom, to get wisdom, and understand wisdom. Proverbs also tells us and repeats it that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Chapter 1 verses uh, 7 and chapter 9 verse 10. So our fear of the Lord's wrath and justice in what drives us to Christ, who is the embodiment of God's wisdom, is expressed in his glorious plan of salvation or redemption for mankind. So in Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasure of wisdom and knowledge, Colossians chapter 2 verse 3, we find the answers to our search for wisdom, the remedy for our fear of God, and the righteousness, the holiness, and redemption that we so desperately need from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. The wisdom that we find only in Christ is in contrast to the foolishness of the world which encouraged us to be wise in our own eyes. But Proverbs also tells us that the world's way is not God's way, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7, and leads only to death. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. And so our thought to remember for today is to understand that God's wisdom never depreciates in value. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 26 from the NIV version says, For the Lord give wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that our fear of you, our respect of you, our understanding that you are the source of true knowledge, that you are the source of true understanding, is the beginning of knowledge. Help us, Father, that to stay focused. Help us, Father, to put our faith and our trust in you. Help us to spend our time meditating on your word. Help us to gain the insight and understanding that we need through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that we can be successful in our lives, that we can do the things that, uh, that, that bring glory and honor to your name. Thank you, Father, for your Son, Jesus. In his precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a blessed day. Thank you.